there is new research out that tells us that smartphones might actually be giving us a condition that doctors used to only see in factory workers. The repetitive movements of texting led doctors to call that phenomenon smartphone thumb. So I'm going to text Dr. Mandira Mero with SSM Health about, oh, wait a minute, I probably shouldn't be Let me texting check. you. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I mean, it's a, this is a serious condition. People uh, describe what's going on. What is this phenomenon? Right yeah, now? so uh, just like you said, you know, uh, factory workers, people that did repetitive motions with their thumb, doctors for years have seen this condition. Yeah. Um, and now we're seeing it in even younger and younger people. I mean, not kind of an older age population with uh, osteoarthritis of the joint. The thumb is a very common joint to have this condition but now we're seeing it in even younger people and we're seeing increased pain. And so if you think about it, we all are very attached to our phone. And our thumbs. Uh, and our thumbs. Yeah, we need Thumb. our thumbs. <laughs> but it's that repetitive motion that's probably causing some joint laxity, uh, a tendonitis, and researchers are saying, they're looking more into saying, is this going to cause problems for us later on? Uh, there's going to be things that we can do to, of course, uh, avoid some of this, taking mm -hmm. a break from our phone, which is always difficult, um, using the dictating service uh, available yeah. on most phones now, or trying to use a different finger. So uh, doing some stretches, uh, taking a break from the phone, some of these things are great to try to avoid quote unquote smartphone thumb. Always want to take a break from <laughs> your phone if you can. Um, I wanted to shift gears to a, a topic that you and I have spoken about a lot, that being sleeping uh, yeah. insomnia. I didn't realize 108 million Americans, I mean a third of all Americans have issues there seems to be some some thought though that exercise can actually help people sleep a little bit better. Yep, so if I said there was something we could do, all of us could do that would increase our mood, decrease our risk of many diseases, uh, improve insomnia, and also decrease sleep apnea, would you do it? Would I do it? Would, would the rest of us do it? The answer is it's exercise. So put away those sleeping pills. Let's get out there and try to exercise even just a couple hours a week. About two and a half hours is what the study showed of uh, moderate to intense exercise with some weightlifting. It actually improved mood, decreased uh, your chances for some diseases, decreased uh, sleep apnea, which is when we stop breathing when we sleep, right. and of course improved insomnia. So the people that said they had chronic insomnia, difficulty sleeping, often reached for those sleeping pills, actually needed less uh, sleep aids, were able to fall asleep. So exercising all around, good for you. Um, there used to be kind of an old wives tale that if we exercise at night, it'll uh, keep, us up. Yeah. keep us up and we'll have difficulty sleeping. Sort of the newer science is saying, listen to your internal body's clock, that if you're kind of a night owl and you tend to want to work out closer to bed, that might be okay as long as you don't feel like it's keeping you up. So overall, stay active, get out there, and you'll sleep better. No night owl on this <laughs> shift, unfortunately. Dr. Mara, good to see you again. Nice to see you. Appreciate it.